All right. Japan Today. Arasaka unveils new miracle product. CEO of Arasaka, Kai Arasaka, revealed a brand new product today that is sure to shake up the manufacturing industry. Our reporter, Miyazato Benjiro, caught up with him for an exclusive interview to discuss it. Mr. Arasaka, thank you, thank you for your time. I'm sure you must be quite busy with all the press surrounding this new product. I'll get right to it. What was the inspiration for the turbo encabulator? For a number of years, there have been a crudely conceived idea of a transmission that would not only supply inverse reactive current for use in unilateral phase detractors, but would also be capable of automatically synchronizing cardinal grammeters. The turbo encabulator is such an instrument. That's quite the mouthful. As I understand you correctly, this is something that Arasaka has been working on for a long time. What changed to make this product a reality? Basically, the only new principle involved is that instead of power being generated by the relative motion of conductors and fluxes, it is produced by the module interact interaction of magneto reluctance and capacitive directance. Sounds rather complex. Where in the industry will the turbo encabulator be used? It's already being used successfully in the operation of Novatrunners. Moreover, whenever a fluorescent score motion is required, it may also be employed in conjunction with a drawn reciprocation dingle arm to reduce sinusoidal replaneration. One last question. About how much will a turbo encabulator cost to potential buyers? <laughs> That's a bit of a secret, but I can say that it isn't cheap. However, I'm sure the government will buy it anyways. You are muted on stream, yes. Let me fix that. Okay, can people hear me now? Okay, yeah, sorry about that. I'm going to have to edit that in post. Uh, 
that's annoying, but I'll figure it out. Um, okay, so you didn't miss much, uh, what I was saying. Um, basically, uh, you know, we're doing a heist adventure today. And uh, uh, after the scream sheet was read, I think that's where I cut in. Yeah. All right, so uh, as I said, we're going to start in Shibuya today. And things have been rather quiet for our group of edge runners uh, since the last job where they stole an armored transport carrying experimental weapons. Um, they've laid low and tried not to draw attention to themselves, and it's worked. Or at least no one's showed up at the doors and shotgunned them, so probably a good sign that. Um, really, the most exciting thing, if you could call it that, is that Chono has been called away by the family which leaves all of you to sort of fend for yourselves in the apartment complex for the time being. You don't know when he's coming back, but he made it very clear that he expected rent on time. And in order to do, in order to do that, you're going to need a job, and soon. Luckily for you, it seems that a certain solo has a contact with such a thing. So, uh, Enzo, you're in your apartment, uh, minding your own business, left your own devices, etc., etc., and you get a call. The call is from an unknown number. I imagine I am very, you know, completely serene, quietly trimming my bonsai tree, going for that very delicate cut, you know, aiming it just right, and then the call goes in the hand jerks and snips in the wrong place. Oh, poor bonsai tree. Pick up the phone. Hello. Hi. And immediately upon the voice, you do recognize this as an old fixer friend of yours that goes by the name Bucket. You never really found out why he calls himself Bucket, but, you know, that's just the way it is. Uh, Bucket says, so uh, I hear you're uh, moving and shaking in Shibuya. That about right? I've been doing some work. Well... That quote-unquote work is actually why I'm calling you. Uh, are you in need of a job at the moment? Work is always appreciated. Excellent. Well, I'm sending you a comprehensive package of uh, details surrounding a, shall we say, a smash and grab or perhaps a uh, subtle theft. I'll leave it to you how it's accomplished. But basically I'm offering, uh, let's say... 800 uh, new yen uh, for you and up to five other people uh, that are assisting you. Sounds good for the delivery. Excellent. You should be getting that message now. And sure enough, uh, you look at your email inbox and you've got a big old package of images and things of that nature. I kind of hang up quietly without response and take the package, read through it a couple times on my own, then call everyone together in that little meeting room area. All right. Also, I am picking up some clicking. Uh, I don't know who that is, just so you know. Uh, and again, uh, I think I was muted when I said this, but Discord is ex experiencing a uh, system problem. So if we drop for whatever reason or, um, you know, the Discord overlay pops into existence, that's sort of what's going on at the moment. But yeah, uh, you all meet in the conference room, and uh, Enzo, as you, you know, kind of begin displaying uh, images, uh, this is what you all sort of get part of the briefing. So, the job is you are stealing a prototype. Uh, it does not have a name, but the code name is Project 65. Now, Project 65 is being held in a factory-type building. So real quick, I'm going to put you guys on this map, and I'll start zooming around for the stream so that they can see what's going on. So the factory is quite large. Um, it is part actual factory, warehouse, and uh, working environment. Uh, more specifically... Uh, I do have to point out some special features. So to the east side of the layout is going to be a, let me use a ruler tool. So this is the actual factory portion, this east side of the building. Uh, there are some conference rooms, there's a cafeteria, things of that nature. 
there are two main doors uh, that lead into the factory slash warehouse. And those are usually for like loading purposes, like a truck would back up, unload, load, etc. Uh, to the west side of the building, uh, there's a bunch of office space where it's just row after row after row of cubicle. Uh, also a bunch of meeting rooms, bathrooms, etc. And there's also more storage space uh, to the northwest. Uh, to the southwest are uh, where the executive offices are and where the main entrance to the building is. Uh, this is the main entrance here, uh, if you can see that. I'll uh, shift ping for extra use, but right about there is the main entrance. So... This is what you're looking at. This is supposedly where uh, Project 65 is being held. And whether or not it's somewhere in the factory section or if it's over in the uh, West Wing, you don't know. Uh, what you do know about security, though, is that to get in or out of any of the doors, you do need a key card. And that is the extent of the information you have except for the fact that the Project 65 will more than likely require um, some form of uh, vehicular transport to successfully get it out of something. And that's what you know. Uh, who, uh, who owns the building? The building is actually owned by Arasaka. Hmm. Well, that's... So we may need to acquire some sort of small truck or van to unload, depending on the size. Agreed. Or an SUV. Hopefully it's not trailer truck sized. The key card, getting the, acquiring a key card is probably the easiest way to gain access. So we need to find some kind of employee. Agreed. Do we have dimensions on what 65 is? Like, we obviously don't know what it is. Have they given us a dimension? Uh, yes, the approximate dimension is one meter by three meter by one meter. Okay, not terrible. So, okay. SUV probably. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Worst we... case scenario, we can strap it to the roof. Right. Okay, uh, Arasaka, we should probably find, my recommendation is we find out where some of these employees gather after hours and steal one of their cards that way. Mm. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, ideally just before they go out to drink or something so that they then think they lost it while drunk. Yes, Agreed. Right before the, the weekend, do the raid overnight. Does the information have any uh, details on security overnight, like private security firms, that kind of thing? Yes, and I'm glad you brought that up because that is something I admitted by accident. So surrounding uh, the southern side of the building is parking lot, but it is otherwise the entire facility is behind a chain link fence uh, with barbed wire at the top. And there is a sort of guard hut that, you know, checks people's badges as they come in uh, that, you know, they can't even get into the parking lot unless they get past that guard shack kind of a thing. Uh, as for uh, on-site security, um, the details in your mission briefing are, shall we say, vague. Uh, they do note that Arasaka is or used to be a uh, rather major player in the uh, cyberpunk universe, but it's not very clear how much military presence they've put into this facility. So we have to expect the works and hope for the best. Agreed. If only we had a net runner, but alas, uh, Stuxnet had to go to that Johnny Silverhand concert we'll just have to make do with what we have agreed more money for us hopefully she doesn't kick uh, doesn't get kicked out if she can't make rent kind of like her despite the fact she's noisy hmm. yeah getting a key card would be the best way in 
if we could falsify if we could somehow falsify it so that one of us looks like one of the employees that'd be nice i don't think that's going to mm. happen though yeah uh, what, what's our time limit on getting this done like it's a good question uh the supposed cutoff date is approximately three days from now all right so not a huge amount of time to do recon Uh, do do we want to dedicate a night to just sitting off to the side and observing the uh, the uh, any patrol patterns of the security guards on the outside, as well as maybe tailing some of the people after work and seeing if they collect someplace. Mm -hmm. I think uh, yeah, one night doing that is necessary, and then the second night yeah. we try to acquire, and if we fail to acquire, at least we have the third night for backup. Backup. Uh, let's see. So while they're busy talking about things, um, I've pulled out my um, I forget the proper term for it in this universe, my pad, mm -hmm. and are starting to go through local job listings on the s site. Is Arasaka currently hiring? Uh, they are. I mean, they're always hiring. They're, you know, yeah. one of those mega corps that will always take a, uh, you know, a uh, new, I, I hesitate to use the word sucker, but it's a mega corp, so. <laughs> Fresh meat. Mm-hmm. Human capital. Getting one of us in as an inside man would be advantageous. Uh, well, I mean, I don't have much of a soul left anyways. You and I are the probably the natural choices. Mm -hmm. Now, Oops. something I would point out, just because uh, again, this is our first heist, and I want to make sure we don't like, you know, fall victim to classic blunders. Um, if you did try to, you know, get gainful employment, um, you would more than likely want to do it under a, a different name than the one you're using. Oh, of course. Because uh, otherwise, they're just going to trace it right back to you. Well, technically, the name I go by right now isn't my current, my r actual name anyways. So, what's the new identity? Fair. So to do a, a false resume. Little get a little e trace going, like you know, a, a mm -hmm. electronic persona. Some good, some bad. You don't want to be too perfect. You just need something a low level, funky type position. Right, mailroom hiring. So, sounds like we've got uh, three things to take care of as uh, you guys try for employment, as you stake things out, as you try to tail employees. So, we're going to split this up so that, uh, well, how would you like to split this up? Would two of you be watching the facility from afar and judging security? Would two of you be um working the employment angle or would two of you be uh tailing employees to try and get a hold of a badge mm. i think um enzo stands up he's like all right so how i would set it up i could stake out the building i have a cyber eye i can keep a, 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 a eye on the place from a distance ikari you seem presentable you can clean up and try for the job leaving Xavier and airbags to tail people. You can split up and tail two different groups, and hopefully one of them goes someplace kind of social. Thoughts? Mm -hmm. Makes sense Sounds good to me. me. Excellent. All right, then uh, let me just reorder tokens so that uh, we're all on the same page. So, Enzo, you're over here. You're over here. All right, so we're going to start with you, Enzo. Uh, if I hear correctly, you're going to go and check out the facility at night, correct? Correct, yeah. Okay. So From you... a distance, circle, look at a couple places. Okay. So uh, you pull up in front of the facility, or maybe airbags drops you off, however you want to flavor it. Mm -hmm. And I would like you to roll me a, let's call this a... Hmm, what should I make this? Let's let's do a perception, just a straight perception for now. A 15, excellent. Uh, so for the 15, 
uh, you are noticing that there are regular cameras uh, on the outside of the building. Uh, they are not only trained on entrances, but on the parking lot and surrounding sort of white space as well. Um, I'd also like you to roll me a tracking, please. I don't know if I have tracking. That'd be just... In that case, it would just be your straight intelligence or your int. I guess intelligence is it's intuition. I always get them mixed up, but either way, it's it's your int plus a d a d ten. An eleven. Uh you are noticing that there does appear to be some form of figures moving around the uh perimeter. Um, but you're not really able to get a feel for what sort of armor they could be wearing, what weapons they're carrying. You know, it's even with your cyber eye, it's maybe a little bit too dark to pick out those details. And was there anything you wanted to look for in particular? Hoping to find some nice little blind spot in the cameras would be ideal, but mostly uh, spots where we can kind of get an idea for the patrols and routines and kind of like the time hmm okay uh what to call this i wonder let's say that this will be another perception check here and the dc is going to be rather high so you may wish to spend luck on this one all right i completely free i haven't done luck before and mm -hmm. i can't remember how that works refresh my memory so, uh, the way luck works is you can basically add to a roll, uh, sort of bumping up your number. Um, if I recall correctly, and I'm looking up to make sure I say the right thing, I think you have to do it before the roll, but I'm, of course, double-checking that. All right, so I guess I'll spend uh, two luck on it, really cut into my luck pool, and then roll for something. So, plus... That's a 16. A 16. Uh, with a 16, uh, there is a blind spot, or at least one that you, you're pretty sure there's a blind spot. And I will put us back on the encabulator map uh, so that I can shift ping you guys the correct thing. So this back entrance to the north appears to not be used very heavily, and there is no camera pointing at those doors. And please uh, feel free to draw on the map if uh, you uh, feel like keeping notes there. No camera at the back doors? Yep, this one right here. Ah, uh, that one. Okay. Yes, for blind spot. Okay. As long as you know what it, it means. It seems like BS. It's too good to be true. All right. All righty. So that's what you learn uh, for your uh, stakeout for the night. Uh, up next, we're going to go to Akari. So Akari, tell me a little bit about how you're going to go about applying uh, for the job. Okay, so um, for the first couple, uh, first couple hours, we'll be spent in a body mod shop mm -hmm. with a couple uh, gen enhancements to hair, eyes, change the shape of the ears, uh, nose a little bit, mm -hmm. make it look like I don't really, you know, change appearance. Not the first time I've done this. Know a few people. Mm -hmm. Second up, I'm going to wander into. Um, I'm going to take a copy of their "We Are Hiring" um, placards and head straight into the secure or the main office door. Okay, so what happens is uh, you, uh, tr so let me make sure I'm saying, saying the right thing. So you are directly going to the facility to try and get in that way, like you're, or are you going to just wherever the location that's listed on the job offering? I'm going to go to the, actually, I'm going to call. Okay. I think that'd be a far better idea. Uh, video call. Okay. Um, I'm going to break into uh, Stux's 
room and use that for the backdrop. Okay. I'm sure and, she'll be thrilled about that, but, uh, you know, what she doesn't I mean, so know long, won't hurt her. So long as I don't lay a finger on her Johnny, what is it, Sil- Johnny Silverhand? Mm-hmm. Is that the Johnny Silverhand merchandise uh, shrine? Oh, God, it's grown. How the heck did that happen? Um, I'm sure she'll be okay with it. All righty. So you call up the number, and uh, a very pleasant-sounding gentleman on the other se- other end says, Hello, thank you for calling Arisaka. How may I help you today? Uh, hi, like, I'm kind, of, I'm kind of new here, and I need a job. I just came over from the North America. You know, shit's going bad down. Shit's going down bad over there, and I think I'm having a, I just need a change of pace, you know? And I understand that uh, Arisaka's kind of kind of the forefront of all this sort of techno happenings over here looking for a job you know ah well might i say that for a uh, expat from the north america you have excellent japanese so tell me a little bit about yourself uh are there any areas you particularly excel at ah uh, my name is min max i'm known for min- minimizing the ah uh, minimizing the organics while maximizing the cyberganics on a on a potential human frame, you really should see what I can do with a dexterous finger joint. Hmm. Really good with the small stuff. Working on the big stuff, too. I just really enjoy seeing my work out there on the streets. and I think Arisaka's distributions and I have a and mentorship program would be a great fit for me. Hmm. If you'd like to see my you know, wares, and I will zoom out a bit and show off my uh, cyber arm... Okay. That has obviously been modified and painted a bit. I think you'd find my work is quite um, well-defined already. Hmm. Well, that is uh, certainly the impressive modification. Uh, tell me, how good are you at more mundane things, such as or mundane things such as welding and soldering? Hmm. You give me a. I actually have my own plasma torch. It was the one of the few things that I was able to cram into uh, the ship coming over. I quite enjoy it. I see. Uh, it is at this point that I would like you to roll me a cool, please. And if you don't have a or not a cool, what is it actually? Uh, your. Let's do a. Let's say either conversation or persuasion. Uh, conversation would be empathy and persuasion would be cool. Oh. Oh dear. Oh, oh bad. Yes, um, and that is a problem because you need to roll another d10 and subtract that. Oh, that's negative two. Yeah. Well, no, that is, uh, you rolled a three, so that is a total of four. Oh, right. Roll d10, not another perspective. Yeah. Still bad. So... The uh, the person on the other end, uh, who still hasn't given you the name, says, I see, I see. Well, um, I can certainly point you in the right direction to apply. Uh, however, uh, we are not exactly looking for, shall we say, immigrant work at the moment. Protectionist bastards. Uh, I mutter under my breath. I understand. I just, this is a very comp- competitive industry. I will talk to you later. Bye. Mm. I pick it up and throw my phone across the uh, room. Clatters against the wall. <sighs> well, that's a dead end. Mm-hmm. I did all this body work for nothing. Damn it, now I'm even more money in the hole. Well, mutter and go back and sh- reshape myself i guess okay so while you're handling that uh let's go to xavier and airbags so uh xavier and airbags you? uh you are trailing uh what would be uh employees of this facility um i want to know are you actually splitting up or are you combining your efforts to uh you know sort of hone in on a particular group I was thinking splitting up. Mm. Yeah, like my, my strategy was going to be uh, keep an eye out for like 
a group of people leaving in a single vehicle under the assumption that they either live in the same place or they're carpooling mm -hmm. and just follow them around to figure out uh, places where they live or if they go into a bar or something, park up and sort of try to make my way in. Okay. So I think this is a uh, definitely a tracking um, if either of you has tracking. If not, it is going to be an int plus a d10. And what I would say is with you assisting one another, um, I'm trying to find where is the assist here. Um, yeah, I've got tracking at a nine. Uh, let's say that your assist, I will grant you a plus two on that roll. I, say, I don't have tracking, but I have local expert. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll say you working together. Uh, can get that plus two. So it's whichever one of you feels nice. the most confident. All right, so that'll be nine plus a d10 plus two. So total of 11. So that's 15. 15. Yeah, sure enough, uh, you do manage to tail what appears to be the standard Japanese sailor, ah, Japanese salary man. Uh, outing where, you know, a bunch of co-workers get together, go to a bar, get drunk, don't get enough sleep, have to go to work the next day, the cycle repeats. Um, mm -hmm. The <clears throat> bar in question is actually one that you have been to before. Uh, it is the Useful. Rockfish Bar of all things. And I will put you on this map. For a little bit of a reminder, the Rockfish Bar is where uh, Chono took you guys initially and where you first met uh, Officer Lance. Uh, La Officer Lance being the one who gave you sort of your first job here in Tokyo. And sure enough, uh, not only are the employees you are tracking here, but so is Lance. Uh, she's in what appears to be her customary seat, uh, sort of towards the back of the bar. Hmm. So probably why I don't want to draw too much attention to ourselves. So uh, I guess just get ourselves a cheap drink so it doesn't look too suspicious that we wander in and then wander straight back out and just keep an eye on them sort of until they leave. Okay. Uh, my question is going to be, um, what are you looking for anything in particular? Like, are you wanting to say... If they start getting real drunk, that's what, you know, come over and introduce yourself. Or are you looking for an opportunity to swipe a card? Like, what are you looking for specifically? Uh, what do you, what do you think? Do we, do we want to risk getting a card tonight or? I would say if the opportunity arises, such as they do get drunk and decide that they are going to get a little sloppy, we could go and accidentally bump into them. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. All right. Uh, other than that, uh, uh, let's see. Mine's going blank. What was it we, we were wanting to do with these people originally? You wanted an access card. Yes, yes, that's right. Uh, yeah, so give the access cards now so we have it tomorrow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Yeah. Pro probably... Wait a little while until they've started to get drunk, and then maybe wander over, shout on some of the more expensive alcohol to get them drunk faster. Okay. Uh, I'm looking to see if this would be best as a stealth, or if this would be best as something else. I'm leaning towards stealth, but... Uh, yeah. yeah. Seduction? Yeah, you know, uh, something yeah, like that. that. Let's see. Uh, let's do this two ways. Uh, one of you is going to use a uh, let's let's call it a persuasion check um, to distract uh, the businessman or businessmen, as it were. And the mm -hmm. other of you is going to use a let's call it a stealth. And uh, so if you persuasion at a nine and nothing listed for stealth, so. I have persuasion as a seven and nothing for stealth. 
Okay. This will be fun. So the way it's going to work is the persuasion uh, is very important then because it will provide you a possible bonus on your stealth. Alrighty. I may as well do that and spend a bit of luck because we kind of really do need that, uh, what you call it, that card. Mm -hmm. Preferably more than one. So let's spend... Let's spend... Actually, you know what? I'm going to dump a whole bunch right now. Let's spend six luck on that roll. Okay. Because I don't have any bonus to it, so it's just a straight D10 plus reflexes or, or luck, intelligence. Uh, for persuasion? Uh, that would yes. be your cool. Cool. All right. All right. Not too bad, sir. So. Seven plus six, so uh, that's a total of 13 and a d10. Twenty-one. 21. Very nice. So yeah, we're going to play this out a little bit then. So you note that they've gotten to that stage of drunkenness where they're like falling over one another. They're like, I appreciate you as a person. You're such a hard worker. You know, that sort of level of drunk. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, you see an opening, uh, and you walk over, let's say with a, uh, a good bottle of, uh, liquor and, uh, okay. how would you go about, you know, ingracing yourself to this conversation? Uh, I'd say, um, well, let's see if we can get a liquor that's like, like something like a fancy Irish liquor or an American liquor, something, something foreign. Okay. And I sort of come over and the way I introduce myself is, hey, I've got a bet I want to settle with my friend and you could, and it involves you getting some free alcohol. Who's interested? Free alcohol? I'm in. Yeah, I'm in too. Well, of course I'm in. Okay, so, yeah, so my friend over here reckons that Businessmen in Japan can't handle the proper American Western stuff. I say he's a I say he's full of it. Hmm. And uh, one of the uh, businessmen sort of tries to straighten his disheveled like suit and tie and says, "Well, if it means showing up filthy gaijin, of course. Give me that damn bottle. Hands on the bottle. All right." So, needless to say, uh, they begin uh, wantoningly downing the liquor, which makes your subsequent stealth uh, a little bit easier. Uh, more specifically, uh, I'm going to break it down for you. So, uh, you this is the first time you've done it, so that's a minus mm -hmm. one. Uh, you are going to try and perform the task secretly, which is a minus four. However... You are, you know, they are drunk, which I'm going to say confers a plus four. So your total roll is going to be minus one at the moment. All right. Hmm. Let's see. So this would be reflexes or cool for stealth. Uh, this would be dex for stealth. Dex. Alright, Dex is eight. Uh, Xavier, what's your Dex? My Dex is a five. Alright, so definitely be me then. Okay. Alright, so that'll just be eight minus one and a d10. Hmm. You know what? I'm not probably not going to be that much used during the actual raid itself because i'll be the driver so let's dump the remaining two points of luck into that to give me a plus one all righty a total of nine 16 a 16 nice. you get a grand total of look at that you get all of their access cards <laughs> So basically, sort of as they get more drunk, I'm like, okay, no, you, you guys are going to need some help home. And sort of as I'm sort of helping carry them out to their car, I sort of go through their pockets for the access cards. <laughs> okay. So that's what Airbags is doing. Uh, Xavier, what are you doing while he's getting the access cards? 
I'm probably going to act a little bit of a distraction so that the officer doesn't see what we're doing. Ah, good call, because if you weren't, she was going to come over and say hi. Yeah, I will, um, after they start drinking and challenge and trying to show me up in a challenge for Western liquor, I'm going to turn and um, make myself aware that the officer is there. Okay. So, you know, uh, you catch each other's attention, you know, finally find seats next to each other, and Officer Lance sort of looks you up and down and says, uh, you're the Xavier one, right? Yep, that would be me. Cool. Well, I uh, hope things have been going well for you. The uh, police academy is going well. We haven't had another uh, 10-gallon incident, if you remember him. That's good. Whatever happened to him? Knocked down a few notches, I hope. Uh, let's just say we decided he was not police material. Understandable. So Although what, now uh, you need to keep an eye on him because that might come back and bite you. Ah, I'm not too worried about it, but, uh, what brings you to the bar? I, I see that Chono's not here with you. Chono's away for a while. Um, so the group of us has been kind of splitting up and revisiting getting to know the area a little bit more i see i see uh it is at this point that i think that a conversation or a uh persuasion uh might be a good role let's do the persuasion okay a 12 so uh lance sort of narrows her eyes at you a little bit and uh looks over you know over your shoulder sees airbags and she looks back at you and says you uh you want a job at the moment edge runner it's possible but it's also possible i'm just here enjoying the night i see well i'll say the same thing to you that i have said to chono in the past um don't do anything that's going to cause me to come knocking down your door, because I kind of know where you live. That's good to know. Mm. But also remember, we're here if you need us. <laughs> Have a pleasant evening, Mr. Xavier. And uh, you she, as officer. And she walks back over to her customary spot, and it's right about then that airbags you return to Xavier with key cards hidden away on your person. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, do, I do not, in fact, flash them out in the open, but I just sit back and say, got what we needed. All right. And I just take a swig of my drink. Hmm. All right. So we return to the common room the next day where you all are going over what you have managed to accomplish. All right. So back in the room, so airbags will sort of take out the key cards and spread them on the table. Well, that's more than we were expecting. Means mm -hmm. we all have easy access. Yeah. Won't they be reported? Also gives us the option of splitting up, or if possible, or alternatively, uh, more than one go if we come across a room with higher level clearance. What do the key cards look like? Do they have like are they like ID cards? Do they have a picture on them? Uh, it's a good question, and I was waiting for someone to ask it. So the uh, cards, if you'll imagine, they are, you know, maybe about a little bit bigger than a business card. Um, and they are uh, all a solid color. Uh, and there's a blue one, a yellow one, and two green ones. And on them is Arasaka's symbol as well as a employee ID number. There is no photograph of that I or of that employee though. It's just a number. Most likely would correspond to any security database, however. Right. And if they get flashed by security, it almost certainly comes up on their screen then. Absolutely. Well, try not to get caught then. I have had no luck with their hiring manager. Apparently, he is a bit racist against non-Japanese. Hmm. All right. Uh, how, how do we go about finding uh, approaches to the building? There's no cameras at the back, the very back door. There's a blind spot where we could just mm -hmm. walk up. But we would still need to get access to the past the 
the fence to get. Alrighty. Do we know what each of the people who looked like were associated with each card? I'm going to say uh. maybe. Uh, roll me, uh, roll me a d10 there, airbags. Let's see how well I can describe them. A five. Uh, you can somewhat describe them well, but after like one or two faces, the other two are kind of a blur. So disguising ourselves in them might be tricky. Uh, actually, now I think about it, it probably would have been useful to like sneak a look at the security hut, see like if they have, if they watch the cameras from like the outdoor hut or if there's a separate person inside watching the cameras. Actually, is there a, like a security camera control room on the plans? Let's go to the plans and find out. All right, zoom on out here. So, uh, you know, you're looking at the plans and it stands to reason that if there is a security room, uh, it's more than likely going to be this one here. This building here, or this room here. Um, not only because it is centrally located to both complexes, but also uh, it is large enough to host a security contingent if need be. Alrighty, so, so my next thought is, uh, I'm just going to float this past uh, everyone to see what they think. As we get one of us out there super early in the morning, uh, positioned across the road, and we watch for someone going out in what looks like a security wall uniform to leave first thing in the morning. And assuming that's the guy who mans the security cameras, we follow him to wherever he lives. And once we find out where he lives, we call up our buddies and the, um, uh, the purple tigers. And uh, just ask one of them to say if someone from their gang could, like, every hour or so sort of drive past that place and sort of rev up the engine really loud as they go past. Just make sure that guy gets a horrible night's sleep. It's a good plan. I, I like it. Mm -hmm. I'm a security guard. I know what I know what makes us incapable of doing our jobs. <laughs> <laughs> we do also have the very limited EMP device made from an agent. True. It's, uh, we could uh, put that right up against the wall of that particular room, since it is outside, and set it off, hmm. which might disrupt their systems for 10 seconds. Mm-hmm. At the very least, it would... Uh... Uh, very badly distract them. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, if I understand the plan correctly, uh, you're going to have the Purple Tigers uh, make the security guard's life a uh, living hell and make it so he uh, doesn't get the rest he needs. And uh, I will say for free... Basically falling asleep, barely able to focus on the cameras. Mm-hmm. Uh, what I will say is that any stealth at attempts to uh, get past a camera or, uh, you know, setting off an alarm, something of that nature, um, I'm going to give you a plus four on that uh, because of the guard being out of it. Mm -hmm. Nice. So that should give us uh, what we need to sort of give us an edge when we're like sneaking into the camera's blind zone and getting in. Mm -hmm. So my, uh, uh, my follow-up question. Now, oh, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Now to actually get to the blind zone, we're going to have to go over the fence, right? That or you're going to have to park to the South and then go all the way around the building. How high is the fence? The fence is approximately uh, three meters tall. Getting over the fence should be too hard for me. Well, yes, but not all of us have replaced our legs with giant with a kangaroo trampoline feet. 
I bet I could jump and carry one of you over. <laughs> uh, alternatively, we drive past, park briefly. Someone gets up on the roof and like snips off the barbed wire at the top. And then we can all just climb over. Dividing oh. and conquer is also one way. If someone goes up in a car, because we need to bring a car in anyway, flash the badge, make some sort of disturbance at the front that's going to attract their attention to that camera, and two of us can sneak in the back. Mm -hmm. All right, so go ahead and uh, your tokens are over to the right of the map. Go ahead and put yourselves how would you how you would like to break this up. Obviously, mm. Stux is not here, so let me GM layer them. Let me think. Because we don't want to sort of raise too much suspicion with someone turning up who's not meant to be there, so if we do go for the turning up supposed to do something, we should probably have it in the sense of, like, hey, we're here for such and such. The guard goes, yeah, I haven't got that listed here, and we go... Wait, that's not listed? Man, well, there must be some screw-up. We better go back and talk to our guys rather than insisting on going through. Mm -hmm. Or you could have them call into the office and double-check, which would also distract that guard there. Yeah. And then when they get no confirmation, we'll go, well, we'll go back and sort it at our end. Okay. All right, so if I understand correctly, uh, Xavier and Airbags, you are approaching from the south. So let's mm -hmm. put you here. Yep. Oops, Scotty, Actually, were you do, saying do, something? Do we... No, I agree. Okay. All right. So uh, we're going to do this as a two-pronged uh, sort of at the same time sl split the party scenario. Uh, so first things first, uh, I need uh, Airbags and Xavier. Actually, no, let's let's start with the top team. Uh, Enzo and Akari, uh, I need you all to roll me a stealth, both of you. And if you don't have stealth, uh, it is based off your dex. Ooh, well, okay, Enzo's got it. Like, even before you add the additional d10, like, you've got it. Oh, nice. So I just need to see Akari's at this point. Oh, wow, that's a 30 in stealth. That's insane. I am the knight. <laughs> Doesn't he get to roll another one on uh, if the 10... If he rolls another 10... It doesn't continues. explode again. It only explodes oh. once. Okay. Well, uh, that plus... So that's a 10 for Akari. I'm going to say with uh, Enzo rolling a 30 uh, that you actually get an additional plus 4. So that brings your total roll to a 16. I'm just picturing some sort of Looney Tunes stuff where Enzo jumps over, unbuttons his shirt, and Akari just steps out of negative space. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, if it works, it works. <laughs> All right, so you guys make it over the fence, no problem. And sure enough, uh, you're not seeing any cameras up mounted on the building walls that are pointed towards this door. And the door uh, does appear to have light on the other side. And as you look through, uh, you see that there is a long hallway. Uh, to the left and right of the hallway is basically open space where there are a multitude of boxes, crates, and other sort of warehouse materials. And it is at this point, it is at this point we go to the Southern team. So Southern team, if I understand the plan correctly, you are driving up to the guardhouse, yes? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So of course you drive up, a guard comes out and uh, motions for you to roll down the window. Uh, airbags does so says uh yes can i help you with anything uh yes we're here to pick up uh, we're here to pick up the uh 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 the what you call them the um the uh, the, the old server boards old server boards uh haven't heard anything about that Huh? Interesting. Uh, I sort of like look puzzled, look over at Xavier and go, that's weird. The boss said that should have gone through by like four this afternoon. Uh, company should be Miramax. Hmm. Go ahead and roll me a persuasion. And this is going to be opposed by his empathy or his human perception. 
Yep. Once I figure out where my sheet went. So that was persuasion, was it? Yep. Da, 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 da. The number to beat isn't a whole lot. So, like, don't just roll a one. <laughs> 13. 13 is more than enough to beat his uh, human perception. And he sort of scratches the back of his head and says, all right, um, hold on a moment. I'll call in and see what I can do. And you see him go back into the guard hut and pick up a phone and make a call. Mm -hmm. Now then, uh, the question is, do we want to try and get that uh EMP agent now, or just do we want to focus on running distraction while the other two get into the building? Um, would we know that they're in the building already? Uh, we know they're attempting to get into the building at around this time. Mm -hmm. I mean, we probably still have our comm beads from the last couple jobs, so mm -hmm. a quick tap of the comm mic on our side would cool. probably come through roughly That's around a... this time. That's our airbags also just sort of like sort of tap the thing and go, how are you doing, guys? We're outside looking at all the nice boxes on the other side of this door. All right, right. We've got the guard distracted at the moment with the call, so now's probably your best time to sneak in. All right. Um, how would we go about picking the lock or hacking our way in? We have key card. You do have key oh, cards. Of course we do. Yeah. That was the whole point. Uh, Here goes which, nothing. I know. Which put my card, card do you want to use? Is that yellow, black, or green? Uh yellow, blue, or green. Um, can I use local no. knowledge? Um something along the lines of general security grades or like in our North American society, green is pretty much basic, yellow is okay, red could be classified. Is there a similar color scheme that Arasaka might use? Yeah, roll me a local knowledge. Let's see what you get. Okay. Let's see here. A local expert, I suppose. 21. Well, with a 21, uh, yes, in fact, you do manage to uh, realize, before, you know, right before you would swipe the card, that actually the... Um, the yellow cards, the two yellow cards. At least I, I, if I didn't say yellow cards were the two yellow, let's let's roll with that. Um, but you know that the yellow card is a um, an all access pass, meaning that they can come in and out of the building at any given time. Cool. Well, let's use that one then. A wise idea. Um, who's got the yellow? Uh, oh, we would have given all the key cards to you, I'd assume. Okay. Quick flick of the wrist, and the yellow card's in my hand, and it's now being slid through the card reader. All right. So you tap the, uh, you know, swipe or tap the card against the reader, and the light turns green, and you hear the door clunk open. Okay. Silently, I you know, grab the door before it pushes, like, swings too far open, slide in there and find a place to duck around a corner. All right, so Trying as, to keep out of of camera. Yeah. So as said, there is a long hallway that is sort of open and there are boxes and crates and it's kinda like that scene from Indiana Jones where <coughs> there's just a bunch of uh, you know, storage materials in a room. Actually I'm gonna retract my statement. Okay. I mean Ikari and Enzo are, you know, kind of change their clothing to look like dress suits so that way we blend in so anyone looking at the cameras just sees office people we kind of keep our heads down and just kind of walk in like we own them. okay uh if if there happens to be a data slate or a um a checklist agent kind of thing that's hanging on the wall akari is going to grab that and look at it with a um face that looks like she has to be somewhere now Okay. So yeah, you uh you grab a uh, thing off the wall, and sure enough, uh, you see that uh, the annual or not the annual, but the monthly server maintenance is happening today. 
Uh, it's a message from IT that basically says that everybody should be logged off their terminals uh, by uh, close of business. So you would probably be able to guess that there is an increased IT presence uh, tonight in the building. Works for me. All right. So while you two are figuring that out, we go back to the Southern team. And at this point, uh, Xavier and Airbags, uh, the guard comes back and says, uh, sorry, the office doesn't know anything about what you're looking for. <clears throat> um, uh, let's see. So Airbags will just sort of look at Xavier and go, no, don't, don't, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll go back to our home office and figure out what's gone wrong. And I think Our McCall had something. People. Yeah. Sorry, Scotty. I think I cut uh, you off too. So either McCall or Scotty. I'm trying not to metagame this because I have a way to get them in. I mean, um, you do have a way yeah. to talk to them. Yeah. Can I assume that they're they're on an open channel so I can at least hear their side of the, th the thing? Their would, side of the conversation? I would say that that would be something you could have yeah. set up beforehand. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Um. You'll basically hear Ikari's voice cutting in over your earpieces going, Okay, guys, there is a server. There's a massive uh, net tech server upgrade happening this evening. See if you can't scrounge some s emergency supplies needed. Uh, it says here that they're... Uh, the CIO's name here is Ikashi Metamusi. Maybe you can name drop him. <clears throat> So, yeah, we'll, we'll sort, we'll try and see if we can sort this out. I mean, I mean, honestly, this is weird. It is not like Mitamushi to mess something up like this. And at the name drop, the guard does get a little twinkle in his eye that shows that he recognizes the name. I'd like you to roll me another persuasion. Uh, I'm going mm -hmm. to say you're going to have a plus two on this because you name drop. And again, this will be versus his human perception so that was a plus two yep that's a 14 a 14 yeah again he's rolling very poorly on his rolls so yeah he just sort of again scratches the back of his head and goes all right uh do you have badges uh i've got access cards all right, so let's say for sake of argument that you have the blue and the red cards. Yeah. So yeah, you flash those. He looks at them and says, all right, well, you uh, you know where to go. Loading docks over there to the right. Uh, just pull up to one of them and uh, you're good to go. Thank you. We'll be out of here soon enough. All right. And then I'd imagine we sort of drive around, sort of park around the left and then quickly zip around to meet them at the back or something uh so out of curiosity because there are two loading doors uh which if any would you be pulling up to uh this one over here this one over here all right so let's say that you are there at the moment all right we cut this back the shortest running distance from pretty much everywhere else mm -hmm. We, uh, we cut back to Enzo and Akari. So again, you guys are in. Uh, you don't seem to have set off any alarms. What's the play? Um, second thing, or after picking up the checkboard, or mm -hmm. the clipboard for herself, um, Ikari is going to pass uh, Enzo several cumbersome boxes that are labeled with um, various uh, computer names. So for sake of argument, he's wandering around with Dell boxes. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, they just say, Enzo, follow me. And if somebody starts talking about things, just say that you have to get this to the uh, to the net server team immediately. Right. Yes. Let's go. And with that, I will lead the way to the second loading bay doors that they are coming that they're coming to. Okay. It's as you go, pretend you're talking on your agent. Like, doing a yeah, very important conversation. Like, yeah, pretty much. It's like, no, no. I 
my checklist has 58 workstations. I'm only counting 54 that on my check sheet. There's four missing. They need to be found immediately. And who the heck is looking up Elfis, uh, Elf lines online during work hours? This needs to be dealt with. This goes against all acceptable use policies on our network. All right. So you only run into one or two people on your way to the loading dock. And uh, it's right about then that Xavier and airbags start to get out of the car. But uh, it's also at this point that Stuxnet, who has been hiding in the back of the car, completely unknown to everybody else at this point, uh, you wake up from your nap and you uh, make yourself known. Huh? Uh, Jesus Christ! How long have you been there? Uh, what what time is it? Uh, Late. Late. Well, see, after my brain got nearly fried, uh, I took a long nap in here. So, uh, about two days? <sighs> okay, um, look, we're in the middle of a job right now, so... Oh, that's perfect. I'm hungry. So after this, we're, we're going to get food, right? Yep. Mm. You know what? I'm going to let this slide. How do you feel about breaking into an IT network? Like I said, I'm hungry, so that sounds like breakfast. So, uh, air airbags will sort of come over to uh, Ikari. Uh, good news, question mark. Oh? We have a friend. Uh, yeah, turns out Stux decided to take a nap in the boot. So, uh, I... Well, great. She's going to be annoyed that she missed that Johnny Silverhands concert. Good. Um, good. I can probably get her access into a, one of the server rooms. Yeah. And if we can figure out where we need to go, because, like, um, you didn't see anything that looked like our target on the way over, I'd assume. No, I... Nothing label. The only 65 I wanted past was a room number, and that was for janitorial services. Mm. Well, we'll check there if we can't find it anywhere else. Okay. Let's get in and pretend we're loading stuff. Okay. So, uh, sort of uh, to catch stocks up to speed here, uh, you are currently uh, at the loading docks, so there are uh, a bunch of very large crates that are, you know, more or less needing a forklift to be moved around. And um, basically looking at the uh, floor plan of the building that you have, uh, the server room for the building is this one here, is this building here. Large tech company, large server room. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. And Akari and Enzo, you would have noticed that at least one or two people were in the server room uh, when you passed by it. Well, immediately it's really close when we let them in. So to the warehouse doors. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you know, you're able to uh, open the loading doors, let uh, let everybody in. We uh, unload some fake boxes from the back of the SUV that they pull in there, just so it looks like we're we're working and doing their. Okay. So Stucks, uh, my question is: uh, Is there, and this is something that I'm not 100 percent sure on on the rules. Mm -hmm. Um, is there a limit to detecting how we're, ah, is there a limit to how far away you can be to detect an access point? Is there a limit? Um, cause I know you have to stay within a certain range else you get jacked right. out forcefully. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking again through the, the rules so at the this, moment. Use me to find out the meat space location of system in an, in an area. So, um, uh, I, I guess no. But I, I guess what I guess is determines what you define an area. Okay. 
what I would say then is you probably your best bet is probably going to be that the server room is an access point. And you would have to stay within that room to maintain access. Okay. That's, f that's fine. I only see one way in currently, though, to that server room. Uh, yes, there is only the one door yeah. in. There's actually, no... It's over Where here. It? Oh, is it over here? Okay, yeah. yeah. I was like, no. Nah, like, no. Oh, okay, this door. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, is, it, is it guarded by anybody? Anything? Uh, nope. Just a standard glass door. Cool. I shall go with him, or with her, and uh, use the access card to get her in. Okay. Uh, Enzo, Xavier, and Airbags, what are you three up to? We're, we're putting the boxes we brought in here. Um, actually, question. Is there any sort of, like, weapon scanner, hazardous material scanner in the warehouse? No, nothing of the sort. Then we unload the boxes in the car that we were delivering, which are conspicuously heavy for some reason, mm -hmm. and then putting them in very convenient places out of. Alrighty. It's like no, no, up against that wall. Yeah, that's right. Closer to that. Yes, there. And open we'll this one over here. All right, that's out of out of the way of wall. Careful! Don't drop it. Don't drop it. You really don't want to drop that. I like what are we going. moving exactly? <laughs> the delivery. It's plan um, plan M for Mirthrin. <laughs> oh. It's not delivery. It's DiGiorno. It's not delivery. It's destructive. Uh -huh. exactly. <laughs> as long as we don't do the Mirthrin maneuver, we'll be fine. Yeah. Yes. All right. All right. So, uh, Akari and Stux, uh, you get to the server room door, uh, and it does appear to have been left open, probably because they're moving equipment in and out. And uh, sure enough, when you uh, sort of poke your head inside, uh, you see two obviously overworked, working on Red Bull. Uh, this is their overtime moment. Uh, there's two or three techs in here. Uh, they are currently ripping out wires, running new ones. Uh, re-racking equipment, and they don't seem to have noticed you yet, but they are present all the same. All right. Um, male? Uh, I would say all male, yes. All right. Okay. So um, I'm going to unbutton a couple top buttons, mm -hmm. uh, hike up the leggings a bit, and I'm just going to strut in and goes, Hi guys, I am I was hired on as a temp to help you out with all the server work tonight. Um, Mishim, whatever I call the guy I am. I really should have written that name down. Oh, well. Mishimoto thought it would be a good idea to bring in some enthusiastic workers. It also pays all right. Like so, you, how can I help? Yeah, I'd like you to roll me a, let's call this a uh, persuasion. All right. Um... Let's see, do I have persuasion? If I not, do, it is actually. based on your cool. I do, uh, and I will add two points of luck. Okay. So 15. that's seventeen. All right, let's uh, let's see what they roll for their human perception. Ah, you win. So uh, you know, understandably, uh, IT guys, uh, you know, following the stereotype, they immediately stop what they're doing to look at the pretty thing in the room. And uh, they actually completely overlook Stuxnet. So while Akari is distracting them, what are you going to be doing, Stux? Uh, I wish to sneak past and get into the server room. Okay. If that's a possible. Because the, the door to the server room is right, right here? Right here, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I will slip in there if I can. Yeah. Slip in, no problem. And yeah, uh, you, of course, see the bundle of wires, the equipment laying haphazardly. But what probably is important for you yeah. uh, is that there is you see these sort of like miniature closet type things. Mm -hmm. uh, those are already completed equipment. So you conceivably could hide in there. OK, yeah, um, I'll uh, take out my guitar and. Uh go in one of those closets and if uh, anyone finds me I'm gonna hit him with my bass <laughs> I'd like it 
All right, so we we uh, we get to do a little bit of net running here. So first things first, you have to jack in, Correct. and I believe that is free. It doesn't take a actual roll. Uh, yeah. yes. All right. So you jack in, and immediately the uh, sort of virtual reality elevator forms. And uh, you, the good news is that there doesn't appear to be any black ice, like no hellhounds waiting for you. Oh, I would hope not in this fucking this corporate network, yeah. Mm -hmm. So where would you Military like to go from here? corporate network. Uh, I will do a pathfinder to reveal the quote-unquote map. Okay. So, yep, that's going to be your uh, interface plus a D10. Yes. Which is, where's my interface? A 10. All right. That's still a 1d8. So it is. Yep. Uh, roll it. Uh, don't worry. There's there's a new sheet coming out. It should be by next week, and we'll be switching to that one. A 15. We'll take the 15. Uh, you see that actually there's only two levels to this elevator. Uh, there's uh -huh. the one you're on, mm -hmm. and there's one above you. And you also see that there is a file... Uh, that is hidden behind a password um, or a bit of data, level. and it's on your level. Okay, uh, I will attempt to um, uh, backdoor that then. All right, that's going to be uh, your the same same roll. Yeah, yep, same roll. A twelve. Uh, unfortunately, uh, with a twelve, uh, you aren't able to beat the password, and you notice in virtual reality that a red dot sort of appears above um, the data and at the same time two other not currently illuminated dots appear next to it so it looks like you only get three attempts at this oh oh no all right uh, i'll try one more time without any luck okay 17 is enough you are indeed able to break into <laughs> the data now, you don't know what this data does, because you would have to ID it. Yeah. Um, can, I, can I do that now? Or yeah, I would say you get one more net action before we return to Akari and the rest. Hey, 16. Uh, good news, bad news. Uh, uh -huh. Good news, uh, you now have the great number for a takeout place. Bad okay. news, looks like it was a dummy file. Oh. Well. Oh well. Yep. I mean, we could all, we once we have six seeds, we could always try that now. That, I told you know I I'm hungry, so this is actually good for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna go to Enzo, Xavier, and Airbags. Uh, it's at this point that as you guys are you know moving the boxes, uh, that a security guard comes up to you all and says, "Ah, uh, where are you putting those boxes?" Oh. Finally, this thing is killing me. Here, can you help me out here? Uh, 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 like, you're forcing I'm dropping. Help, please help. I, uh, uh, and, he, you know, he rushes over and is like, what the hell is in these things? Uh, it's, I don't know, some sort of yeah. server supplies. I'm not paying. Yeah, to... Server racks, motherboards, I don't know. We, we, we just ship them. And then airbags sort of stacks another box on top of them. <laughs> oh, poor guard. I'm going to roll his strength. <laughs> All right, he, he, he barely keeps it. He's like, why am I carrying this? No, you take it. All right. Uh, uh. Thanks, mate. Uh, I, I guess I owe you one. Right. I, I need to see some form of identification here. It's uh, Sure, it's in my front left pocket. He just As my arms are full you. of boxes, I kind of hold out my pants. I'm not reaching in your pants. Phrasing. What you can hold the box, or you can reach into my pants. <laughs> Roll me what a choice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh dear, that is a one, which means you need to roll another d10, and oh dear, that is a seven. He says yes. Congratula. He says yes to reaching in your pants. Congratulations, you have a date tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if that's the consequences of a one, that's that's not bad. I, you know what? I find it funny, and I'm all for LGBT inclusivity. So let's do that. 
So yeah, the uh, the guard sort of looks a little bit embarrassed, reaches into your pocket. Uh, what is actually in your pocket? That is a good question. Uh, I don't Crazy. think Enzo would very much in his pockets because it kind of breaks up the line of the suit, and he likes the suit to look nice. So yeah, probably just empty pocket. Okay. And okay. and also, why is it I why why am I, I the only one who will never get shipped in these shows? <laughs> am I always the one getting the date? <laughs> I, I, I want to say we apparently typecast you for it, but this was not intentional, so... <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway, you, so... You just got that natural charisma. Yeah. So, it's, uh, I thought it was that pocket. Uh, a second here. Uh, one second. Did you, did, you leave, did you leave it in the van? I might have left it in the van. <sighs> got one second, and airbags will go out to the car. Okay. Uh, the guard looks a little bit sheepishly and, and leans into Enzo and says, uh, here, you know, you had something in there. Here's my number. Maybe, maybe we can talk about that later. As he tucks it into my jacket pocket. Mm-hmm. Thanks, yeah. And then, of course, airbags, you come back with uh, the other two key cards. Mm-hmm. And, uh, there we go. Guard looks at them, looks at you, looks back at them, and uh, he shrugs and says, all right, everything's in order. Just, uh, you know, be careful. I hear the uh, tech boys are a little bit uh, insane in the head, as it were. Uh, when are they not? And yeah, he just uh, sort of smiles at Enzo, then uh, walks away. Meanwhile, uh, Akari, uh, you're a tech. I'd like you to yes, roll sir. me a actual, like, tech roll. Uh, okay. To see how well you are possibly showing up the uh, poor, poor IT staff that is working overtime. All right. Uh, basic tech? Yeah, let's do a basic tech. Well, a 20. Uh, let's just say not only are you the uh, shiny thing in the room, but you are also showing them up tremendously. Like, you are correcting them in some way shape or form and i'll let you define how that is all right i am basically showing them the basic principles of structured cabling because very few it people actually understand it and it's kind of like feng shui except with you know physical cabling not everything can be done with wi-fi boys the actual data actual data speeds are far more efficient if the cables are running and you know i'm basically going on lectures Okay, you see the seven foot long cable going into this five foot long run? You don't need to do that. Take out a pair of scissors, snip it off at roughly five five feet and three inches, or five feet and six inches for those of you, or five feet, three, six centimeters. And you can just put a new end on it, plug this in, and now you have a half foot cable, which can go over here. And while I'm doing this, I'd like to sort of just to see if they know anything about this 65. I'm like, so I'm guessing you guys being IT, you guys get to see all the cool stuff. I mean, when I did that job back at the um, uh, National Hospital, I got to see where they put all the dead bodies. That was pretty cool. Like, you guys probably see some fairly cool stuff. Any ideas what might what Arasaka might be working on? And you know, girls gotta girls gotta make her uh, girls gotta make money somehow. This is fine getting paid is fine but you know if arasaka is going to make something huge if i'd like to get my stock options in place Hmm. i will say you can roll your conversation skill okay i will give you a plus two bonus to it okay and conversation is basically cool uh emp actually emp okay because i don't have that as a skill so that's basic emp which is that's 1d10 plus 6. For my, if I have an imp score of 6, 1d10 plus 6. You got it. Well, plus 2, so uh, plus 8 overall. So. Right. Hope. Seventeen. 17. Let's see what they roll. Well, with a roll of a 1, uh, yeah, they are both flummoxed and uh, mildly impressed. Uh, which means that, thankfully, uh, they do not find Stuxnet yet. So we go to Stux. Uh, again, you have, uh, I believe your interface level is, what, three? Correct. So I think you get, what, three net running actions? Correct. All right, so what are your three net runs? All right, well, uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to t- get that number, 
And then I'm going to go uh, up a floor, which I believe is free. Mm -hmm. And then uh, what is on this floor? Okay. Uh, let's see. On this floor, uh, you see three passworded files. Oh. Okay. Well. Uh. All right. Just going to point out and go... One, two, three. Hmm. You. The middle one. Okay. Middle one. <laughs> and yeah, uh, I would say you're looking at this in virtual reality and, um, you know, it's a little bit different. Uh, we'll say for sake of argument, you know how I said that, that there were unilluminated dots above the file? Yeah. Um, there's only one above this one. Okay, then. Uh, I will add three luck to this roll. Okay. Uh, uh, oh, no, no, yep, yep, all right. And... 16. So, uh, I believe I have to roll something here. Let me double check. Nope, just a DV. Uh, yeah, so the... Well, I guess this is a good time to talk about whether or not we've been doing this right. So is it meat or beat, or is it just beat for the DV? For the... Well, for checks in general. Um, it's Defender usually wins, but I'm not... I, I'm pretty sure for net running, it's... I, I want to say... I want to say meat because it, it it doesn't say anything about you having to beat the D or meet meter beat the DV. Which is right, and I think that's just the way we're doing it. So let's just you know meter beat because the DV okay. was a sixteen. So okay, uh, yes, you do manage to capture whatever this file is, but again, you would need to identify it. Okay. Um, I will look at the other file. There's two other files, yeah. Correct. Um, I'm I'm just gonna go ahead and ID this file, I guess first. Okay. 17 and uh, a 20. Uh, yes, in fact, you find what... Uh, actually, because no one's told you in character, uh, you find a file that is about a prototype or a project 65. Uh, it's a bunch of techno babble that goes way over your head, but uh, it does seem to be very important for some reason. All right. Well, the, the, we don't need that. Obviously, we're here for no. no. I'll, I'll take that, and then I'll uh, look at the file to the the first file. Mm -hmm. Does don't have any lights on it. Uh, it has four. It has four. Okay, I will attempt to get that one too. All right. And uh, as you do get through, but it appears that this was another sort of trap left by the system administrator. Um, because when you do successfully backdoor in, uh -huh. the security system across the complex activates. So a blaring oh. siren, red lights, the whole nine yards. Jeez, well, you know, if only, if only Enzo didn't do, hurt, hurt that guard. <laughs> no, that's not my fault, obviously. All right, those are all my actions. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, the important question is, do you tell the others about Project 65? Ah, uh, no, I just, I, not at the moment. Not at the moment. All yeah, right. Not at the moment. So we go back to uh, Enzo Airbags and Xavier. Uh, the alarm has just started to go off. It's obviously not caused by me. <laughs> All right, so Airbags will sort of look up at the alarm and go, I'll get the car started, and he'll dash out to get the car ready to go. Okay. Xavier and Enzo, what are you two doing? I um, imagine we make eye contact and go, oh, damn. Do we know where it is yet? Uh, where's the, the guard that was with us? Uh, he was down patrolling the south, but uh, he is now rapidly approaching you again. I walk up to him and it's, what's going on? Is there anything we can do? Uh, someone set off the alarm. Uh, looks to be in the server room. 
I'll uh, we'll, we'll keep an eye on things here. They're doing the maintenance, so it could have accidentally triggered the alarm. Roll me a persuasion, Xavier. Thirteen. All right. Let's see what the guard rolls. Well, that's only a 12, and a 13 beats 12. So the guard just sort of says, you know what? You're probably right. I mean, it's happened twice already. And uh, we cut to Akari very quickly as uh, all the techs that you're sort of showboating for sort of look up at the uh, blaring alarm and says, did you do that? No, it wasn't me. Was it her? No, she didn't touch any of those wires. Hmm. Let's see. Tell me, boys, how's your um? Uh, let's see. How can I phrase this so it sounds even slightly proper technically? <clears throat> how's your real-time access or monitoring access server guarded? Was it something that we've been accidentally playing with, or was it the other team working a working on the in tandem? Uh, they sort of look at one another. Uh... What do you what do you mean exactly? Sorry, the other temps, of course. I mean, you're... the ones actually outside deploying the the computers. I'd like you to roll me a uh, another persuasion, please. Another persuasion. This okay. time, I'm going to say it a minus two. All right, this will be fun. Um, I have a plan B, so. Persuasion. Uh, let's see. So that's 20. Uh, that was perception. Ah, pers I'm sorry. Uh, uh, what was your actual uh, score? Persuasion. Uh, let's see. So that was a 8 plus. I can do character sheets, apparently. Uh, persuasion. So... Uh, persuasion is cool. Mm -hmm. uh, so that would be eight plus three. So eleven. So yeah. Okay. I don't actually know how I got twenty-two out of that. So it's at this point that one of the uh, techs looks at you and says, "You're not a temp, are you?" Well, I'm going to. Um, well, from the back of from the crux of my back, I'm going to pull out the heavy pistol. And stand between them and the way out. Okay. They, uh. Door boys. They just sort of raise their hands in alarm and say, Damn it! Why did we not learn the rule one of IT that if a woman walks into your room, she's probably a spy? <sighs> um. So, quick question, um, uh, for the lore. Yes. While. He He's net running. Is he able to communicate outside? Like, can he, can uh, Stux hear anything I say? Yeah, I mean, they yeah. are still in meat space. Yeah, okay. I'm still in meat space. Um, it's, just it's, not, it's not the days of old. It's kind of okay. like VR, augmented reality, basically. Yeah, so Stux, you hear this happen. Uh, Stux, you know anything about a 65? Yeah? Good. Let the others know now. Okay. Hey guys, I found something. Wait, hold on, more files. And yeah, uh, what's relevant for you is that Project 65 is found in Stack C, uh, Stack C, Row Two, uh, Column Two. Okay, and that was the third file. Mm-hmm. Okay, and that and that that's all the files here. Yep. All right, I'm gonna jack out. And then I'm going to run, I guess. And I'm going to come in here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be like, I know where it is, Akara. I got it. And I take my guitar. And uh, are, are any of the IT guys close? I assume she would have been kind of close to them. Um, yeah. They're, you know, a couple meters away, but it's not like they're aggressive or anything. They're just sort of holding up their hands. That's not what stuck, so. Uh-uh. Gonna, I got it a car. Let's get out of here. She's gonna go hit one of them with her guitar. Okay. Gotta get that uh, reputation, I suppose. Exactly. All right. 
So uh, we'll just say this happens with a roll because they're sort of defenseless. So you smack yeah. one pretty hard with a guitar. Yeah, I smack one pretty hard, and I'm like, "Stay down! Like, let's go." And, uh, the other IT guy is like, "Whoa! Uh, don't hit me! Don't! Don't! Just, just go! Go! Do whatever! Just don't hit me!" I'm just go. I got this. Oh, oh okay. Bye. So again, uh, it is stack C, row 2, column 2. Yes, I tell them that stack C, row 2, column 2. Now, the one thing I would say is you don't know what stack is stack C. I would hope that they follow good warehouse policies and label things, but we'll find out. No, they're all, they're, they're all labeled A. <laughs> so yeah, Enzo and Xavier, uh, it is your call which of the stacks uh, you proceed to start searching. Um, we look for the stack CS1. Yeah, so to sort of zoom out on this map a little bit. Uh, so to your north is a stack. To your south is another stack. To the farther south is another stack. And then if you were to go into the west wing of the building, there are two stacks there as well. You know, I turn to the guard and point to the box I'm holding and be like, ah, this one's supposed to go on stack stack C. Which uh, which way C? I don't know. I'm the security guy. That's a fair point. I'm going to the try. I'm going to assume this one. You go search. Okay. So go ahead and roll me a. I would say a perception here would probably fit best. Seventeen. Sure enough, you go to row two, column two, and there is a big old red sixty-five painted on a red crate. I just yell over, "I found stack C." And the guard says, "I'll be right there to." Drop off and get the pickup. Obviously, <clears throat> well, obviously, well marked quest item. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, airbags will surreptitiously sort of drive the van and reposition it by that uh, other door. All right. So Xavier and Enzo, I assume you switch boxes. Yep. We drop off the box, put the put our, our big heavy crate in the that spot. Okay. So as uh, as you try to get the box out, the guard sort of follows you and says, Hey, what are you doing? Just pick up a delivery. Oh, crap, that's right. Uh, thanks, man. Uh, we need to sign for this. Where's the, uh, the doc master? Uh, something's going on here. I, I, I can sense it. And it's right about then that we'll say Stux and Akari probably round the corner. The guard doesn't know it, but Akari and uh, Stux, uh, there is a guard uh, between you and the rest of the group. Uh, they, the guard itself doesn't seem to have uh, a weapon on hand, or if he does, yeah. it is currently concealed. Can I do a quick backtrack? Um, yes. With uh, Stucks running out, I want to have one last thing to do with the IT guys, and then I will rush out. Okay, go for it. Um, I want to tie them up with uh, cabling. Okay. With Ethan. Um, find the uh, one guy that is kind of cute and smart, and give him my agent ID. But I'm sure to tell him that before he becomes a cyber hero, um, that it is there are three separate VPNs, two firewalls, and at least one anonymizer protocol separating any network between that and my agent. So don't try to find me. Fair. But then he asks, yeah. are, are, are any of them NordVPN? <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag add Even. not in that. <clears throat> And then I rush out. And then you rush out. All right. So it looks like you've got a guard that is caught on or is starting to catch on. What is the play here? I, I look at uh, um, uh, our, our is uh, Akari and S Sucksnet. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is uh, Akari still or, or is Sucksnet still armed? Is one of them still the gun out? Or? Uh, I probably have holstered it for a second. I, I have my guitar. I just, I just go hit him with the bass. I was thinking more of a. We don't want to like violence too much. You guys familiar with like blazing saddles, hostage situation. I mean, he can be a hostage when he's knocked out. I look at Akari and be like, "Don't do it, man! Don't hurt her." And uh, the guard starts to turn and look at who you're shouting at. 
where's the guard at in relation to it? Uh, yeah, let me just drop a very basic token here so we can uh, get a feel for where the guard is. And I assume each of these squares are two meters? Or are they one meter each? Uh, they should be one meter. Really? Here we go. We'll just uh, we'll we'll use this uh, token for the time being. Oh, I get I I get where you're going with this. Um, Aha. Okay, so I have my I have my gun, and I've accident I've made sure to eject the clip. You know, good trigger discipline and whatnot. I always assume the gun is loaded. <clears throat> and I'm just going to you know keep threatening stucks with it just to confuse the guard oh i see so you're holding stucks quote unquote oh, hostage you're, doing that. you're holding me hostage for, okay for a few seconds i will allow you to break free in a second and then you can do your moment of heroism all right so yeah the guard i'll get what i was laying down yeah yeah so the guard does turn away from xavier and enzo to focus on akari and stucks uh xavier and enzo I need you both to roll me a athletics, please, to see how well you're carrying this thing to the car. Uh, airbags, meanwhile, is like rolling up the door for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, a 19. Very good. And what about you, Scotty? I'm going to go ahead and throw two luck into it. All righty. An 11. So I'm going to say we're in pseudo turn order at this point. Um, so Enzo and Xavier, you've gotten to about there. All right. Now, uh, Akari and Stux, what is the play here? The guard is slowly reaching for something uh, that appears to be in a concealed holster around his backside. Uh, I'm going to slowly move the pair of us forward. Okay. Go ahead and move uh, yourself. Well, at the same time ranting and raving about the poor workplace uh, conditions that we've been forced to undergo due to the draconian IT policies preventing me from keeping contact with my family on the outside world. Damn it, this is a significant strain to my mental well-being, and uh, damn it, I'm going to have to start killing people until they let me go and see my family. It's funny because it's true. Yes, yes it is. <laughs> All right. So uh, I would like you, Akari, to roll me a, let's call this a perception to All see right. if you notice what the guard is trying to do. Okay. Perception. 23. Well, I don't think he can succeed unless he, he explodes here. So I'll roll just to be safe. <clears throat> doesn't explode. So you can tell that he doesn't appear to be armed with a gun, but he does appear to have what is essentially a stun baton. Okay. Um, uh, and then at the very last, um, I'm going to say, okay, wind up now. And then I just push um, Stux towards the guard. All right. So Stux, you are pushed towards the guard. What is your action? Ah, I'm going to strike him with the base. All right. So go ahead or, and uh, let's... To. Let's go ahead and do that. So yeah, that's your uh, melee weapon. I know it's my melee weapon. Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> about that. I don't have that skill. Woo. All right. Uh, it's uh, dex, right? Yep. Based on dex. Well, uh, 19. Still pretty good. Oh, that's initiative, but. Oh, I think uh, I think that's still the oh, same yeah, thing. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, uh, that's a 10. So go ahead and explode dex. again. So 21. 21. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure you got this, but uh, let me just roll to be sure. Yeah, you brain him pretty hard. Now, I guess my question is, are you just trying to knock him out? Are you just trying to hit him? Um, That's a good question. Um, No, I'm gonna try and hurt him. Okay. So yeah, uh, let's just say for sake of argument, because uh, I'm trying to find the stupid table. Um, go ahead it, and roll me some damage on that. Okay. Uh, would a guitar be the same as a knife or like a two d six? That's what I'm trying to find. There's um, no, there's, there's no table for a guitar. Well, I mean, just like tech in general. 
You could treat it as an axe, but do boom, sha. <laughs> Now there's a, cause isn't there a, uh, like a weapons table, even an abbreviated one somewhere? I'm looking through my PDFs to try and see if there is one. For red or 2020? For uh, red. For red, yeah, it's on the easy reference. Ah, here it is. Uh, treat this as a, yeah, treat this as a knife. Okay. What's his? A two. All right. Well, the uh, the good news is that uh, he's not exactly wearing the best of uh, armor. He literally uh -huh. just has uh, a uniform on. So you you know smash him across the face pretty hard, and he drops to the ground unconscious. I'm gonna do it again. Are you sure he is unconscious? Double tap. He saw my face. No, at the moment, you have not killed anyone, is the thing. And killing someone is something that could lead back to bad things. In a good heist, everyone walks away. Yeah. In a... yeah. I'm going to shout <clears throat> at it. I'm going to shout at Stux as uh, she raises the uh, axe for another blow. No! We don't need a body count here. We got what we needed. Let's get out of here. Oh, fine. We leave bodies... We leave a body, we leave a trail. And besides, I'm pretty sure that the uh, EMP phone is going to go off in about now. So there's not going to be a uh, video camera history as the other thing I left in the server room goes off. Mm -hmm. Oh. So, okay. yeah. Okay, then. I'll, uh, Stux won't kill the guard, but okay i guess to strike his leg i mean if you wanted to sure yeah I'll strike his leg instead okay sort of that extra hit yeah okay so it's Fine. at this point uh that uh you know you do some more damage to him and uh it's at this point that enzo and xavier uh you do manage to get the thing into airbags his car so all you got to do is hop on in and get away and at this point uh, probably a very important thing because you hear the sound of sirens headed in your direction. <clears throat> Stocks, get in here! Stocks, Stocks is too busy beating the scar. I'm coming. <laughs> All right. I will grab you yep. by your collar. So, yep. um, my well, important. Once everyone's in the SUV, he'll hit the gas. Gotcha. Uh, we'll do a driving check at the moment, but my question is, what was actually in those very heavy boxes that you left behind? I'm guessing some sort of, like, flammable substance. My main thought was, like, if if something goes missing, they'll be hunting for it. If something burns down or there's a big fire, it's just an insurance write-off. Gotcha. All right, so airbags. Uh, so I know how to flavor this. I would like you to roll me a, a driving, please. Mm-hmm. Fortunately, that's pretty high, because I used up all my luck. Wow. Well, with a 22, nice. uh, to sort of paint the picture, you all pile in. Uh, you begin pushing the uh, pedal to the metal. Uh, let's say, yep. for example... Pull, pulls a perfectly executed J-turn handbrake into reverse. Mm-hmm. And instead of going through uh, the actual exit, you decide to go straight through the chain link fence and your car handles that no problem. And it's right about then that the timer on the boxes that you had laid out go off and there's a muffled explosion and a burst of fire out of the loading dock doors as the warehouse portion of the factory catches fire. And it seems that in the confusion, uh, you are able to make a clean getaway. Mm -hmm. yes. So I sort of zoom out to take the long way around the city mm -hmm. and then eventually make our way back to wherever our contact is. Yeah. And ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of the Turbo Incabulator encounter. So yeah, thank you uh, so much for playing today. I know it was a little bit shorter than usual, but uh, you know, we wanted to make sure we got everybody in. 
Uh, I'm like 90% sure that we will be on next week, but you know, we've said that how many weeks in a row now and we keep missing it. So I would just say, watch Twitter, watch, uh, Twitch. If you haven't followed already, that's a good way to find out as well. Uh, but this is where I'm going to end the stream. So Twitch, YouTube, etc. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you later. Bye stream.